I hope everyone's had a nice weekend. I started a 1,000 piece micro uh, <laughs> micro puzzle. I think it's driving my husband insane, and uh, I might lose my eyesight after this. But you know what? <laughs> work from work from home uh, crafts and activities, right? Maybe I'll show you uh, my progress at the end of this if we have a minute. Wow, we're up to 146. I think Rabina, we're almost ready to get started. Sweet. All right. Sure. Shall we kick it off? Let's do it. Awesome. So hello and welcome. Um, you are joining us for the Ascend Impact series. Uh, and we're joined by some esteemed uh, colleagues and friends today. We're going to be talking about employee engagement during the times of COVID-19, uh, especially taking a look at it from an ERG or employee resource group perspective. So in some of your places of work, it might be called ERG, it might be called BRG, business resource group, but obviously the, uh, the COVID-19 virus has really impacted all of our day to days, whether it's from our work life, to our home life. Um, a lot of us are likely working from home. A lot of us are uh, engaging and connecting with each other in different ways. And a lot of what we've known to be day-to-day -day interactions and connections, the way that we engage with our communities and our colleagues has really rapidly changed uh, given today's circumstances. So we love to just take um, the next hour to talk about how COVID-19 has changed the way that our industries are functioning and specifically how we're engaging within our employee resource groups. So just a quick intro, Mike, if you don't mind popping on to the next slide. My name is Sarah Porritt. Um, I will be your moderator today. I will be joined by two panelists that I will introduce to you very, very shortly. I am the Senior Director of Integrated Media Planning at OMD, and I also lead diversity and inclusion. I am a member of my Asian Leadership Network, ERG, uh, and I'm excited to be hosting this conversation for you today. Next slide, please. In a little bit, after we have our panel discussions, we will also be joined by two fantastic contributors um, from Texas and from New Jersey, and they will be providing us with quick perspectives on how their uh, companies and their ERGs are also responding to COVID-19. Awesome. So just a quick bit of housekeeping, uh, just so you know what you're working with, all the different functionalities that are available to you. This webinar is currently being recorded and the copy will also be available from Ascend. Um, also, make sure that you're plugging in your devices, make sure you don't run out of power during this webinar. And there's also a chat functionality. So whether it is underneath your screen, if you are on a computer or um, it is going to be, uh, I believe, um, a little icon if you're on your phone or your iPad. There's also going to be an opportunity for you to ask questions at the end. There's a Q&A feature. Uh, it's a, a block with a Q in the middle of it. Um, and if you're on your phone, it might be on the top right corner. And we'll also be doing some audience polling um, in the middle of this as well. So we love your participation. want to make sure that we're engaging you throughout this conversation. And then at the end, we'd love to just have you quick at Take a quick survey to provide your feedback. This is the first of many different webinars that we're gonna be hosting, especially around this ERG conversation. So it's gonna be really, really critical for us to ensure that we're providing you with the right content uh, and that we're providing value to you. Uh, and if you have any questions at all, here's the, the, the email for Ascend as well if you wanna get in contact with us. All right, next. Great. So just a quick rundown. Um, we are going to quickly go through objectives, backgrounds, introductions, hopefully have a 40 minute discussion. I will keep my eye on the clock. Uh, quick five minute contribution, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, and then a little bit of Q&A. And I know a couple of you have already submitted your questions, which is fantastic. We won't be able to get to all of them, but we will be able to get to several of them. And we want to make sure that we are addressing your questions uh, as best as we can, and maybe leaving even some time at the and for live Q&A as well. All right, so if you're on this webinar, you are probably familiar to some degree with the Ascend organization. We are the largest nonprofit Pan-Asian organization, and we have um, a reach of over 60,000 students, business professionals, executives, corporate directors, and we are serving the entire career life cycle of all of our members. 
And um, a little bit on the next slide about the impact series, I believe. This is actually the first installment of our impact series, uh, which is why, again, your feedback and your participation is very critical. We want to make sure that in these times, you're still connecting with each other, uh, especially throughout digital platforms. So this is for your information, a forum for highlighting some hot topics, highlighting some issues that are top of mind for you. So we want to know what those are. It's also a forum for sharing best practices and making sure that we're providing you with actionable next steps and action oriented advice in order for you to take that back with you and be able to pivot, evolve, change uh, your perspective, change how you're operating within your current context. Um, and it's also an opportunity for us to showcase some wonderful transformational leaders across our Pan-Asian organization. So get excited. Um, and then also in case you're wondering why ERGs, why BRGs, Aside from the fact that um, this is a very relevant topic of conversation right now, Ascend is also uh, the host of an annual ERG BRG leadership forum. So we'll go into that in too much detail. You'll see all the different things that we cover in this annual forum um, on the slide right here. But we are a thought leader in this space. We want to make sure that we are building a community around this space and again, providing information in formats that are most valuable to you. Awesome. Uh, and if you didn't notice, a couple of the countries that um, our, our, uh, our panelists are from, I'll go into that in a little more detail earlier on. This is actually a global forum. Yes, uh, so ERG, BRG, not just limited to Asian leadership networks, Asian BRGs, ERGs. This is covering a very broad global perspective. Um, for us right now, again, reiterating the fact that it is very timely and very relevant. Um, and we love the fact that there are 231 of you currently on the webinar, and we have representation from over 150 organizations and companies. And we hope that everyone who comes onto the webinar today will find it useful and also continue to help us grow this Ascend community because the greater we are, the more perspectives that, that we have, the stronger we become as a community together. All right, so on to the actual discussion. Um, and again, today we are taking on more of an uh, ERG perspective and taking a look at employee engagement throughout the times of COVID-19. And I'm excited to introduce you our panelists. Uh, you may be able to see their pictures and their videos uh, in the screens as well, but joining us from the Philippines is Stephanie Galera. Um, and I wanna just toss it over to Stephanie really quickly to provide an intro to you. Thank you so much, Sarah. I hope everybody's able sure. to hear me. Hello, hello everyone, and thank you so much for having me here. Um, I'm very, very privileged to be here today uh, to interact with you. Um, as Sarah said, I am Stephanie Galera, and I have been with IBM for a little over 12 years. Um, I'm currently an HR professional focused on talent as the Asia Pacific Talent Analytics and Skills Leader. So in terms of my experience re relevant to today's topic, um, I have been an ERG leader, um, or in the case of IBM, we call our communities uh, business resource groups. So BRG uh, since 2008 and eventually was very, very fortunate to have the opportunity, the unique opportunity to also lead the team as the DNI engagement partner for the Philippines, which is the HR side of DNI, uh, separate from the volunteers from your communities. And you can definitely reach me in uh, LinkedIn, Stephanie Galera, uh, very Plain, plain and simple, Stephanie Galera. Uh, just send me a message and I'll, I'll be happy to speak with you and exchange ideas with you. Thank you. And Stephanie, um, just curious. <laughs> I understand you're a badminton player. You are a mommy of seven cats and you also play multiple <laughs> instruments. I won't yeah. make you name all of your cats, but I would love to know what instruments you play. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a funny story, actually. I had second thoughts about revealing that information about myself because I know, <laughs> I know that there, there are uh, some parts of the world where um, there's a lot of stereotype and talk about Asians and pianos and grades, uh, but I kind of decided against it. I'm going to own it. Um, I'm, going, I'm not going to hide the fact that I know how to play piano. I've been playing it for, uh, I learned it for 16 years, uh, drums for seven years, and guitar for a couple of years more. So music, I think, in general, is just simply an area of interest for me. And whether you're coming from a specific culture, it's always passion and discipline. And sometimes luck plays a vital role in, in any success. 
And if we can clone you, we can probably make a band. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> Great. Um, and then we also are joined by Liana Brinded. Liana, do you want to give us a little bit of a download on your background? Sure. Um, so I'm Liana Brinded. I'm the head of Yahoo Finance UK. Um, so I head up all the editorial operations there, from writing from the editing to broadcasting, radio. Um, but I also liaise and work with very closely marketing, product engineering, sales, you name it. So I'm around. Um, but I'm also the global lead of Elevation, which is our Asian ERG for both Verizon and Verizon Media um, as a group, which um, spans about 140,000 employees. So no pressure. Um, <laughs> it's a um, really great role to have. Um, I think it's been really fantastic as well being a global lead, but actually sitting in London. Um, and not in the US, um, which shows that, especially in the environment where we are today, where we're all digital, we're all hyper-connected and things like that, that you can lead and you can make an impact for anywhere you are in the world. Um, so having that opportunity to actually work across the world with all my other colleagues and help you know everyone live hopefully you know better lives time at work um has been uh really great so you know and i'm very honored and privileged to be on this chat today <laughs> and a uh, fun fact about liana is that she is a roller derby athlete and I, I know we're all on lockdown right now across the philippines the uk the us but curious how you're staying active actually during this time and then we'll kick it off into the conversation <laughs> <laughs> well, when you say active, walking up and down stairs. Um, so I, I think this is what's really interesting. Um, so yes, I um, usually play in Vold's RB team. I actually transferred to a men's team. Um, I got poached to go and actually play in a men's team. So that was quite cool. Um, but yeah, so I've been playing roller derby for about seven years. If you don't know what that is, think about it as American football, but on roller skates. So it's um, kind of crazy, but it's covered by ESPN, BBC, <laughs> all the other big ones. But staying active, I think actually it's been a really good lesson in that when we're in this environment right now, when we're in lockdown, it's like sometimes rediscovering things that we did doing before that we kind of <laughs> drop for other things. So I haven't been as active and that is totally fine. Um, I keep telling myself that as my jeans get tighter, um, but I may not be exercising as much, but I have been picking up, um, back up a lot of instruments that I've been playing. Um, so like I played flute and guitar. So I've actually like picked up things that I used to love, but didn't have time for before. So it's kind of nice rediscovering that kind of creativity. Yeah. So we will have to have a jam session then. And I actually love what you're saying uh, about forgiveness. Because I think we're all trying, at least at the beginning, to do all the same things. And I think today's conversation will be about that evolution, about that rediscovery, and maybe perhaps a little bit of that forgiveness because we are activating under a different context. So we'll kick it off. Let's do it. Oh, actually, before we do, uh, yeah, let's, let's go into it, actually. So quick question, just to set the stage a little bit. And I, I think Stephanie might still be muted just in case. I'm very curious, Stephanie, actually, um, within IBM, within your industry, how you yep. feel like HR, IBM, IT technology, that whole industry has been impacted by COVID so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're actually primarily a technology company, but what a lot of people aren't aware of is that we're also, we also have very different services, even consulting services catering to our clients. So uh, we have cloud and HR services, which are housed in what we call client innovation centers. So you can imagine that we needed to migrate um, all of the office supplies and office uh, equipment and office setup to working from home rather quickly. And um, we're very lucky because as a technology company, you would tend to want to explore options on how to effectively transform how people work through um, work from home and using um, tools and applications. So when COVID-19 hit, we're, we, we've already been able to establish an existing infrastructure to support working from home. So we do have a lot of um, social productivity, collaborative workspace, uh, workspaces and platforms, and of course, uh, video conference and conferencing tools, of course, integrating that with security policies and measures that can work with your own existing devices. 
So I've actually um, been or also been fortunate to be working from home for several years, and it has been working so far. Um, I'm very thankful for that. I have I do have a regional team, and we continue to maintain connectedness throughout all of these years through all of the tools that we're using. Amazing. Um, and Liana, just curious. Um, given that Yahoo Finance is likely a lot of that is also digital, uh, if the transition for you and for the industry and how you're currently working with your colleagues is, is as seamless as what Stephanie is describing. Sure. Um, so I'll just give a bit of context just about Verizon Media. Um, because so um, Yahoo Finance is one of the products that sits under Verizon Media. So we've actually got, you know, about like 20 different brands. And one of the great things about the company, because there's so many different products, whether it's Yahoo Finance, Yahoo News, HuffPost, TechCrunch, in the know, um, in the know all these different ones is that we do have um, really good collaboration between each other and we actually all work as part of like a, um, I suppose, a big ecosystem and a team. And when coronavirus hit, one of the things that actually really you know was amplified as as a company because we are technology and digital based even though we're obviously in offices all across the world just like similar like ibm we have so many offices so many connections across the globe already that already would have to liaise and coordinate with different regions on a daily basis that it was it was more simply moving everyone into that environment, not just, you know, pockets. But um, what has been really great is that there's been a really good, um, the focus was, is the enabling to make sure business is usual as much as possible. But the second part of it, and in tune with all of that, is putting the employee first. So how do we make not only um, the business practices and the way people enable to work from home, make sure they're okay, but also provide the technology, the, um, you know, the structure, the messaging and everything, putting it all in one thing and together and working with the ERGs, which I know that we'll talk about, um, which, you know, has made a difference. So I think what's been really good on a reflective basis is how quickly and how mindful that switch has been um, to making everyone work from home. And in fact, you know, it's, it can be done well, even if, you know, government things, you know, take a lot of choices out of their hands. Yeah, um, and I, I love the fact that you use the word enabling. Um, I, I feel like um, a lot of us aren't necessarily provided with the right resources right away or provided with the right guidance right away. So the fact that you were able to activate on that so quickly, I think is amazing. Um, also curious, maybe other facets with regards to how IBM and Verizon are both dealing with COVID-19, because I understand this is a time of leadership. Leadership is really important. Um, communication is also really, really important. How has your organizations at large dealt with um, the, the change in how we're all working together outside of potentially just, uh, you know, making sure that we're streamlining the workflow and, and putting everything online. Stephanie? Right. Um, so I, in, in my own experience, I think the very first few things that happened uh, when COVID-19 hit was that there was a lot of communication, as you mentioned, that's really, really very, very important. And that was cascaded from our leadership onto the employees and the communications mm -hmm. varied from guidelines relating to face-to-face -face interactions, travel restrictions um, that follow, of course, local country policies. And, of, and we want to also update our employees and, and give them other advisories. But ultimately, to Liana's point, what I've seen as a recurring theme in all of these communications is really the human side of it. So we have to make sure that our employees feel supported uh, they feel that they're equipped to stay at home. And more importantly, they feel that they're not alone. And, and we can do that by extending support to our employees um, and making sure that they have all, all of the mental health um, uh, functions that they have to go through, mm -hmm. through employee assistance programs. And of course, definitely community building. And that's a big factor for us. Yeah, yeah we have anything to add? Yeah, I, I would definitely echo what um, Stephanie says, because beyond anything, it's actually been, you know, when there's a crisis, when it comes to companies, when it comes to leaders, things like that, it is really crunch time on whether you build a community or it sticks. 
And what, what's been really, um, you know, really heartening since the onset of this is that the community has been built from and the messaging around and the communication, not just from top down, but bottom up as well. Mm -hmm. So it's felt very holistic. It has been one, even though we're a huge company with lots of companies in that company and then have a bigger company, mm -hmm. it hasn't felt like that. It's been very unified. And so where are um, the things that make a difference? Let's say the first step. So for example, even if you've um, got a complex organization and you need to um, do all these logistics and admin and all this stuff, first and foremost is like, what are the leaders doing, how they're communicating? And so for instance, our CEO uh, and our CEO, CEO, they've been doing daily catch-ups for the entire employees every single day and their leadership team. Um, and having those kind of um, big scale, I suppose, meetings or all hands daily really does enforce a, um, you know, a feeling that you're not alone. And it doesn't matter where you're sitting, your leaders are here. And also there's a direct line of communication. You can ask questions, they will answer it. There have been some hilarious ones. There's been some <laughs> like very serious ones, but that has fostered a real sense of connection no matter where you are in the company structure. And secondly, um, it's really paved the way as well for um, all different units to work together for the common good of making sure that we keep everyone engaged, keep everyone, um, you know, um, not just productive, but actually as human beings, um, you know, make sure that they're okay during this time. And that's why more than ever, ERGs, BRGs uh, have become even more integral during this crisis and needed more than ever. And I think it's really reflected that and companies that are like ours that actively engage on a daily basis, um, that's where, you know, the key to success has been. Amazing. And speaking of engagement, uh, Mike, I think this is Liana's cue for us, actually. If we want to actually pull up the first polling question, um, very curious to hear for the folks that are on the webinar, do you feel in, in, uh, employees are actually more or less engaged while working from home, or you also have the option of about the same? So I'm going to choose one as well. And I think this is more so in regards to the larger context of engagement from a workplace perspective. Um, you know, I, I think it also depends on what sector you're, you're in, whether or not, you know, you're getting more or less work, um, whether or not, or not your industry or your account or whatever it is that you're working on is actually more or less busy based on these changes that are happening to you. Um, if you're less busy, I'm going to guess you're probably a little less engaged. Um, but let's see what the results are looking like. It's actually looking like um, we're, we're seeing that folks are 25% probably more engaged, 37% less, and 38 about the same. So I take it there's some folks like me that are working on jigsaw puzzles, <laughs> maybe a little tiny bit less engaged. Not surprised to see that. So actually, let's pull up the second poll, if you don't mind, Mike. Great. So we have one more um, question coming to you. Do you feel employees are more or less engaged with company culture while working from home? And I think this is a, a different pivot on engagement. It's not just um, how hard you're working, how engaged you are with your work and your colleagues, but also how engaged you are with your community um, that's at work. How connected do you feel? So excited to see the answers there. I think once we all are able to submit our, our answers, um, we'll be able to get a quick perspective on um, whether or not we're more or less engaged. But kind of building on what Liana was saying a little bit earlier, right now is there's a real big opportunity and need for us to build community. Um, so how effective have we been? Uh, it's looking like 30% more um, which is actually higher than just more generally, which is, I think, very interesting. Maybe we're not quite as engaged with our work, but we are slightly more engaged, uh, at least within this context, with the culture. But I would say all in all, still less engaged than normal, probably because you don't have that day-to-day -day interaction. Um, and 20% with 29% with about the same. All right, so actually speaking quickly um, about engagement, um, what do you, 
Liana, let's start with you. Feel like has been the impact overall in regards to the uh, COVID and employee engagement, but also engagement from a culture and community perspective with the the rest of Verizon. Yeah, so um, when it comes to our ERGs, we have like an, a mission statement. So not just for Elevation, but every single ERG, the core thing, we call it the four C's. So even pre-coronavirus, it's always been culture, career, community, customer, um, or um, commerce. And basically, they're the four pillars that should drive everything that we do in order to um, increase the engagement and awareness, not just within the company, but what we can do externally. And we have found that, um, and what we're seeing, and obviously, this is evolving, um, because this lockdown, you know, some of us have been in it for five, six weeks, some of us have only been in it for a month, you know, it's differing all around the world. And obviously the, uh, you know, the governmental mandates and what those lockdowns look like different from place to place. But what we've really found is that as time has gone on, we've, we've adapted very quickly and seen all the points of how we can engage people. So before, when I suppose in any, in any scenario, you're reliant on in-person meetings now, have to be very focused on what, what are the pressures what are the things that um, employees really need right now? So when you dial back on the basics, it's like basic needs. They want to feel like they're safe. They want to feel like they're valued and they want to feel like they're being listened to or heard to or, you know, the basic needs as a human, as a worker. And so when you um, look at that, what does that look like? It's, you know, being being able to voice concerns, having help where they need it, things like that. So when we started looking at those and ERGs working together with each other, because we're all multifaceted, right? Mm -hmm. You may sit in an Asian ERG, but you may also be a parent. You may also be in the LGBT community. You could be in, um, you know, an ex-veteran. So working together with lots of the ERGs has enabled us to then really answer what kind of, you know, those asks are or those things to kind of allay concerns for employees and the engagement we feel has gone up like a lot of people because they're at home if you have something that isn't just like oh we're here to reassure you but something that they can actually engage in what are you giving them so even if it's like a um, yoga class or whether it's someone helping you with your finances during this time or whether it's like a cooking class to raise awareness of like Asian heritage for Asian Heritage Month coming up, you know, things like that. Um, it's actually been a lot more um, visibly prolific than maybe in-person events has before. But I've talked a lot and I could go on this for a long time, so I'll give Stephanie a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I, I feel like it's the same at my place of work as well. Frankly, you know, we, we are in offices all across the United States. This is actually the first opportunity we've had to come together as an organization across all of our different offices. Funny that you mentioned yoga. I started teaching yoga uh, along with seven other teachers from different parts of the country once a day for all of our employees. We all wow. have these um, opportunities to share, um, you know, craft projects, recipes, tips for parents on Microsoft Teams. Uh, so it's actually been really amazing. To, uh, traditionally, these activities that are, are spread out across in little pockets, um, maybe some parts of the, the uh, office that, um, you know, there is a little more silo, they don't feel quite as connected. But I think it's, it's kind of almost democratized that community and brought us all together in a funny way. Um, and Stephanie, just curious, uh, in terms of satisfying employee needs and even corporate needs, what kind of role do you feel like ERGs are playing in addressing this challenge? And, and how have those activities and that function been impacted due to the fact that we are now, uh, a lot of us are working from, uh, working from home and working digitally? Yeah, yeah. So um, just, just to add to, to what has been said earlier, um, what I'm noticing happening in the world is that you see a certain compassion and kindness that you wouldn't have otherwise seen had we not been in this situation. So you're seeing a lot of people being upstanders for frontliners um, and people 
uh, starting to reach out to each other, checking to see if they're okay. I, I couldn't count the number of people who I wouldn't normally talk to, but then suddenly they send me, send, they send me messages and making sure um, that I'm okay. So I think communities play a very, very vital role in addressing the challenges at this time. And some of the most creative ways and ideas to stay connected are coming from our ERGs. So ERGs, more than ever, are the masters of building community, and we really need that right now, uh, not to mention that uh, they're the ones building the motivation and the influence for people to stay engaged and stay connected. And it, it, it ha has been evolving, um, but I think for, for our business resource group in particular, like Liana, we also have four pillars. I think that's the magic number, uh, four goals to guide them in, in creating uh, policies, programs, activities, and events. And the four pillars are, um, you can kind of look at it as the entire cycle of uh, life cycle of an employee's career. So we've got hiring, um, retention, employee leadership development, and then of, of course there's market development. So there is a lot of opportunity uh, to work on any of those four goals without necessarily having an event to do so. So there's plenty to do and now a little more time to do them. And while all of these activities are moving into uh, digital stuff, we, we have a lot of opportunity to work like uh, to work on policies. You can you can actually reach out, and that's what our ERGs do. BRGs do. They would work with HR. They would work with benefits. They would work with different facets of the organization to make sure that their voices are heard. And these are the policies that we want um, to to put in place for the community and the organization. Yeah, I love that you're seeing this as an opportunity, actually, Stephanie, which is wonderful. Yeah. Um, and uh, Liana especially given your global perspective, I'm very curious. There is, um, especially since I, I live in New York City and when I look out the window, you know, I, I see um, a lot of folks who are wearing face masks. And in the beginning, um, I think there was a lot of xenophobia with regards to Asian Americans. Um, the fact that this is a virus that came from China, the fact that, you know, um, that's where it originally started. Um, there is a lot of violence against Asian Americans. Um, I, personally, I was afraid for my parents to leave the house because I don't know how people are going to react to them, especially since they're, they're, um, they wear the face mask. You know, they're trying to protect themselves and it's a part of Asian culture. Just curious if, um, you know, globally, if there's been any conversations with regards to mitigating that xenophobia and what, the, uh, what role ERGs have played. Absolutely. So, I mean, when you look at the facts that, um, you know, around the world, in, in all different countries and different cultures, um, you know, Asian businesses, Asian people have been disproportionately affected from the onset of the coronavirus business, you know, Asian businesses, especially I think in New York, down in Chinatown, the businesses were closing mm -hmm. a lot quicker than any other restaurants and places um, around in the city. It's similar, it was similar in London, it's similar in lots of places. So the fact is, um, regardless of how you see it, like the facts are, there has been statistically a, dis um, you know, disproportionately affected by, um, by this. So there's always been, now this is the most important thing, and this is why ERGs are essential in times like this, and especially, mm -hmm. Uh, when it comes to the coronavirus and as you pointed out where it originated from and what it's so important that communication and understanding and educating in a time like this and um, being calm and calling in not just calling out but like calling in and helping streamline that communication and also work through any concerns that members have that's when ERGs really come into it. So the fantastic thing um, that we have at Verizon Media is that we do have a daily communications line with, um, like Stephanie says, with all different units across all, you know, and as yourself um, said, Sarah, um, across the world and across lots of different um, business places. So if there seems to be a concern from an employee point of view or worrying about the wider world where they're sitting in at the moment, that there is a way to address it because the ERGs are there for that community. They are able to give that voice and give that platform and, um, you know, work through or talk with um, people within the business that can make a profound impact for them, for their safety, for um, 
communicating out concerns, but also finding solutions to them or helping provide an education platform or do amazing stuff like what you guys are doing at Send and having these webinars or having talks to help make, you know, there be more ripple effects to that impact, not just internally, but externally as well. Yeah, and I, I love the fact that in the UK, you are thinking about our Asian small businesses here in New York City. I really, really appreciate that. And um, that's actually one of the, the things that we're focusing on um, in some of our offices for Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, which is in May. Um, I'm not sure if that, that same um, month uh, and that celebration exists in the Philippines or the UK, but um, here in the States in May, we celebrate Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And one of the ways that we're doing it um, in New York is, um, and even supported by our West Coast, is we're supporting small businesses, trying to figure out which ones are um, are in most need of support, which ones are still servicing customers and figuring out how we can, um, you know, provide them with some of our resources, some of our love, some of our capital, um, but also pivoting towards more digital types of executions. Uh, mm -hmm. We're thinking about hosting a book club um, by a, a Japanese American author, and we're going to do that over Zoom, uh, maybe have a little sake along with it. Uh -huh. um, and then thinking about other things like, you know, do you have a, um, a, a recipe that you really enjoy? Are you willing to go on Zoom um, and share that with us or creating a recipe book of uh, employee favorite recipes? So all these ideas that, um, you know, maybe wouldn't have had as much interest if we were doing this face to face uh, is now becoming really, really interesting, given the fact that we're now cooking more from home. We have a little bit more time so we can read. Uh, so just curious, maybe we can st start with you, Stephanie, how um, if you have any plans for May, is, is this a thing in the Philippines? Um, and if so, uh, you know, how, how are you engaging with your employees digitally? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, globally, we are planning several events uh, through the course of the month. And of course, the events have been shifted to digital format. We don't know up until when we'll be in quarantine. So uh, the first two events will be done in partnership with Leap. Um, we will be hosting panels as well. Uh, the first event is titled Insight to Asian Culture and Understanding the Asian Professional, um, which will be moderated by our partner Leap. Uh, the discussion will be around IBMers and their point of views in terms of that and then another event would be insights into Asian leader uh, where again LEAP will be moderating and I think the last event that we will have is something that will be run by our BRGs which is xenophobia and allyship which which ties very nicely to the conversation earlier uh, so members of the many communities will be joining the panel uh, they will be sharing personal stories and speaking about the importance of being an al ally and speaking up when you see a person being discriminated against. So a lot, a lot going on. Um, and, and just to add to the conversation earlier, um, just a story about our BRGs right now. At the beginning of the year, we kind of gathered a small team of volunteers to work on what we call BRG revitalization, which was meant to solution the varying levels of success and maturity of BRGs, um, which is also a, a global problem. So um, when COVID-19 hit, we quickly pivoted. And I think um, there was one question ab about this uh, in, in the chat. So uh, we quickly pivoted and thought, well, what can we do to help support our employees? So we have been running what we call a BRG Kindred Cafe sessions with the communities. Um, and we've run those for several reasons. One is to remain connected. Um, two is to make sure we're giving the best possible support that we could give to our employees. Uh, three, to facilitate uh, usage of collaborative tools. So um, there was another question about tools. We use Mural to get inputs, um, stories, and even topics from them, from our employees uh, that they'd like to talk about. And more importantly, um, what I'd like to point out is that we want to create safe spaces for a dialogue for where people can actually be themselves and air out different challenges they might be facing because they might have different challenges. And, and apart from really community building, which is um, what ERGs or BRGs are made to do, we also kind of build resilience by teaching respect with all of our employees. So that's, that's just different kinds of ways of taking care of yourself and, and the, the ERGs are, have a pivotal role in that area. Yeah, and then Liana, how about yourself? Um, is there any planning currently happening across the world for Elevation? 
Yeah, absolutely. It's um, our pillar month as well. And that's something that we're gearing up to at the moment. So it's very similar um, with some of the initiatives that you guys are doing. So we're also um, going to, so this is also um, enhances the idea, right, of collaborating um, with other ERGs or with other units. So we're going to be doing a special um, three-stage book club. And it's um, the person who's leading it, it's part of Elevation. But he's also a mindfulness expert as well. He's a trained mm. mindfulness coach. Um, so he's leading it. And the book is actually called Model Minority. And it's also talking on the very same thing about talking through, um, you know, issues of xenophobia, um, allyship. It's also, talk, you know, breaking down all those barriers and like educating, but in a very mindful way and across a few sessions. We're also doing similar things where we're doing cooking classes. So, um, a whole load of us from across the world we're going to be doing different sessions and the thing is there's been a real appetite for it no pun intended um but because one of the things that we've really seen is that across our company where people are starting to get really engaged is is the fact of like i suppose the more humanizing behind your colleagues because at the moment i don't think it's been more unprecedented that i've seen inside so many people's homes than we are now <laughs> so the fact that like we're all going to take turns and do stuff in our kitchen or how to you know pimp up your ramen or like um do like a luxa cooking class or something like uh, um those kind of things like people seem like you know they really want as well because it also is a bit of fun it's actually really great to highlight that asian heritage across so many different cultures so we're doing that um but also at the same time things like um you know film or tv watch parties discussions um and then also working with um other ergs like we've got another one called neurodiversity slash dial which is a lot about the mind and um, so we'll probably be teaming up with them for um, yoga or Tai Chi over Zoom too, because um, obviously there are Asian practices that are, you know want to highlight during that month. So there's actually quite a lot of things, but we're going to be doing that across the world. And so that's the thing, even um, it is mainly um, a key month for the US. You know, us in London, Dublin, Bangalore, we'll all still be aiding towards it and still you know heralding that culture and supporting our colleagues with that with activations around the world so yeah so we've got a very exciting month coming um and i i love liana that you're making it so personal i feel like you know the engagement that that you're currently planning um you're allowing people to showcase a part of themselves and be human like you said you haven't seen the insides of folks homes probably uh as much as you have as of recent um and i i, I think that's a that's a really key point because um you know when we do have these yoga sessions the teachers tend to talk a little bit about their day give some context for the students uh, about the practice before they go into it and we've had a lot of people write us and tell us this is the the first time they've had like a real close human to human connection with a coworker um, in quite some time, even if it's virtually and how impactful and meaningful and important that is. Um, and just throwing one more idea out there. Uh, I happen to be an R&B singer. So shout out to the Asian American musicians. Uh, we don't get quite as much of a spotlight. Um, <laughs> So also we'll be sending out a playlist um, for, for my organization of different Asian American artists that they can keep their eyes on. Um, but just to ra wrap up this, this discussion part of the panel, would love to understand if you have any sort of best practices um, or any last parting words before we get into the Q&A in regards to, uh, or actually when we, before we get into the, the two other contributors in regards to how ERGs should function or operationalize in these times. Maybe we can start with you, Stephanie. Okay, sure. Um, what I think is the most underrated but most important agenda in a meeting, because meetings still happen on a day-to-day -day basis, right, um, is the check-ins that happen at the beginning of a call. So staying connected means having to chat about non-work-related things and empathizing with what employees are going through, uh, because you'll never know if they're going through something. And I can't, I can't stress enough the importance of creating safe spaces for for people to open up and talk about their challenges. So the solutioning that happens in those exchanges between employees in those calls are very, very important. And it, it creates a, a very, very good, innovative way and, and safe space for people to actually talk um, 
talk about all of her issues. Um, when it comes to tools and, and stuff like that, um, use as many online tools as you can. Um, keep it engaging by talking to people, welcoming them, asking their opinion um, on things. Like uh, just fairly recently, we were talking about, well, um, if we're on a panel, should we have a whole music before we start? What are the requests? Or of the music you want to hear while we're not talking right now. We're waiting for, for attendees. So uh, don't just stop with the call. Always, always mm -hmm. follow through um, with connecting offline. We have Slack and Mural in IBM as, as tools that we use to continue the conversation. So I'm always, always looking for the, the human connection because we've done a lot of stuff. We've done like work from home bingos. We've had bring me's and we've had bring our pets to work. And <laughs> someone, someone actually actually bought their chicken to work which is good which is fun because we get to know people we get to know their families and that the, the relationships get a lot a little stronger as you communicate with them so yeah I love that how about you Liana any best Everything practices I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know we went through a lot today already so, so. apart from that um yeah so I, I would say I would say like this, like uh, off the top of my head, there's like three big things. So first of all, I know we keep saying it, but like never underestimate how important it is to establish that communication line. Like even if it's a day that there's nothing much more to say than the yesterday and whether it's company updates or something, keep that communications line open. If you're an organization that maybe need to enhance it or think better ways. Think of what is the communication line? Are you engaging with the right people that can represent that kind of thing? Like put in a structure, start with that. Second, again, is definitely enabling um, during this really, really hard time is giving that safe space that everyone has a voice. Whether it's like they're struggling at home because they're trying to juggle all their children in a small, I don't know, apartment at the same time having all these business goals to do in a crisis. Mm -hmm. Like being able to provide that space for them to voice it and also go, okay, absorb it. And how can we help as an ERG? And then as well as a business. And then thirdly, like never underestimate the fun stuff. Like I know initially, like some places are worried, like, oh my God, everyone's going to work from home and I was going to do only work. When a majority of the digital world or tech world, right? We just need a computer. We need an internet connection. It doesn't matter where we are. You can still develop relationships and connections being digital. But um, because this is an, I suppose, enforced work from home environment, what people have really been engaging with and what we've found is actually been, you know, happy hours, the check-ins, the coffee breaks, the, we even have um, some employees that do DJ sets for us on a Friday, mm -hmm. you know, after work. And you think, oh, you're going to sit there and watch a DJ. Well, we all seem to, like hundreds of us. Um, it's really, it really does um, provide, you know, the extra um, oomph um for employees and a lot of that is the fun stuff and whether it's um specific slack channels we have a few that we have like called good vibes which is you know fun stuff to make everyone laugh in there and that's really engaging and also another one on the humanizing aspect um which was created by one of the big marketing people at our company called work from home portraits and it's just some really pretty some really funny like what is your work from home setup and things like that get people talking, makes you feel like they're all in it together and actually spark that communication that you want. So never underestimate the fun stuff too. Yeah, and um, just building on Liana, what you said about enabling, um, I think what I've seen through some of the ERGs too is advocacy. So they need to raise up to the organization, to leadership, what the different uh, subgroups need. So for instance, you know, to the point of parents, I think the key word is permission. I think parents, we realize, need to have permission um, to be while they're also uh, having permission to, to work from home because um, a lot of times, you know, folks will feel guilty if they need to take care of their kid, but no one really signed up to, to do two jobs all at once, maybe sometimes two or three. Uh, and it's really great when leadership and organizations fight for you to have that ability to do that. And it's okay. And not only is it okay, it's, it's great that you're, you're doing both. Um, so actually, let's get a couple more perspectives from across the U.S. 
if we want to transition over to our contributors before going into the Q&A. So joining us from Texas is Karen Nguyen uh, from Mr. Cooper Group. So Karen, would love to hear a little bit from you and what Mr. Cooper Group is currently doing um, in the context of COVID in regards to dealing with um, how we're working in this different environment. Yes, great. Thank you so much, everybody, for being sure. here today. I appreciate to ascend for this opportunity. Uh, so I work at Mr. Cooper Group. We're based in Dallas, Texas, and then we also have offices around the United States and in India. And we started working home remotely um, kind of early in March when things began escalating in the United States. And from there, we found a few different areas and priorities for us that I'd like to share with you all and hopefully you can take it away and apply it to your company. Uh, so first, maximizing the usage of your employee resource teams that you may have for specifically remote team members, or if you don't have one, consider creating one at this time. I think now more than ever, we have that shared experience with each other where we're all working from home, not just the people who are working from home remotely full time before. We're all, we're all experiencing this together. So programs like work from home tips and best practices, but also programs such as balancing that work life versus home life, being able to provide that separate space for yourself where you're able to work as efficiently and productively as possible. And then when you're able to turn it off and go back to your personal life and go back to spending time with your family. I think this has also been another opportunity to maximize and share the perspectives of, again, those team members that have been working from home remotely full time even before the pandemic happened. So for example, how you may spotlight team members during Women's History Month, Black History Month, Asia Pacific American Heritage Month, taking that opportunity to spotlight some of those team members that were working from home full time, allowing them to share their perspective, their experience, their advice, how they made those adjustments in working from home. And then lastly, another focus area for me has been making sure that once our team members steadily return to the workplace and the offices, that we continue to have that focus on the full-time remote team members, that we don't lose that. So for example, using this as a time to promote remote inclusion, making sure that remote team members feel like they're valued, that they belong just as much as people in the office. And then also looking at some of our recruiting efforts. Are we inclusive to remote team members that may have those mm -hmm. skills, that talent? And are we opening up our job to team members that may be working remotely? So those are just a few areas that we've been focusing on at Mr. Cooper Group and appreciate this opportunity to share with you. Yeah, thank you for sharing that perspective, because I think it's one that we didn't really touch on too closely um, in regards to diversity and inclusion. You know, inclusion has a different meaning now. Are you being included in Zoom meetings? Are you are having the opportunity to actually speak up now that, you know, only one video can can showcase uh, and, um, you know, you can't really talk over each other quite as much. So you need to be able to make sure that um, you are having that that balanced conversation. So thank you for that perspective and for sharing with us your beautiful chandelier inside your home. <laughs> Uh, so let's actually jump over to Xiaodong Chen, who's joining us from New Jersey for BMS. Uh, Xiaodong, I would love to know how BMS is currently um, operating under these contexts, and uh, especially from an ERG perspective, what you're currently doing. Yeah, sure. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we hear you Perfect. great. Thank you. So this is uh, Xiaodong. Uh, I'm the Pan-Asian Network Workplace Lead at Bristol Myers Squibb. So today I'm going to share uh, two uh, areas that BMS can are focused on, the community support and the uh, member engagement. Uh, thanks for the, uh, uh, the panelists for their great inputs. I think the great minds look alike. Uh, but you know, we want to share something that uh, we do specially for the uh, Pan-Asian uh, network. Uh, so one of the first thing I want to share is the, the uh, the community support. So uh, as Sarah, you mentioned you know, at the earlier that uh, at the very beginning of this uh, uh, crisis that you know, there's a lot of uh, the bigotry against the Asian community. So PAN act as a conduit to help BMS leaders to act very quickly uh, to address some of these concerns. So for example, uh, our CEO made a clear statement at our global town hall saying that the virus does not have a, a nationality. Um, mm -hmm. Furthermore, our executive sponsor, PAN's executive sponsor, uh, issued a company-wide company -wide letter to denounce the bigotry against the Asian community and clearly asked the 
allies to say no to this behavior. Um, you know, at also very early stage of the crisis, Penn uh, worked with the BMS Foundation to mobilize a large relief effort to China. Uh, so the second area I want to share is about the membership uh, community, uh, membership engagement. I know that all the panelists have great tips to engage the members. So we also can have a very special uh, customized uh, innovative matching algorithm called Let's Meet program. So we, I use, personally use that software to uh, meet quite a few mysterious colleagues that I have never got a chance to meet uh, at set um, and you know, keep connected to fed the loneliness, uh, the isolation working at home. So finally, I want to give a shout out to our executive sponsor uh, and also our DNI leaders for their great guidance and most important, the PAN leaders for their uh, great efforts towards this. Without this, none of this could be done. So uh, PAN continues to address and meet our members' needs as this pandemic evolves. Thank you and uh, I hope you all stay safe. Thank you for sharing your perspective. I really love the decisive leadership. I think sometimes it just takes a leader to squash the issue and um, you know, prov provide some context around what the, the corporate perspective is to make sure that um, we don't really take that xenophobia any further than uh, is already being um, a part of our communities and conversations. So thank you so much. Uh, I know we have a lot of questions that are on the docket. There's a few that you've submitted, uh, and I know we're also coming close to time. So I'm, I'm glad that everyone is so engaged. This is a very lively conversation, and hopefully it's helpful to you. Um, so for the sake of time, why don't we j jump over to the Q&A slide with the uh, user submitted questions? I know there's a couple in the Q&A queue as well. Maybe what we can do if Rabina and Mike, you guys are okay with it, is we can address some of that as a follow-up. Um, so that we can focus on some of these questions on the screen right here. Great. So actually, I want to just jump to the second question. Um, actually, let's let's go to the third one here. Are there volunteer opportunities your ERG is are participating in, and um, are there any such opportunities you would recommend? I know Sheldon just recommended, um, or he he proposed that at um, at his place of work they put together a relief fund for uh, to support China. Interestingly enough, at my place of work, um, a colleague of mine who went to school in Beijing also put together a, a GoFundMe to support um, buying face masks for um, nurses and doctors in Queens. Um, just curious within uh, IBM as well as Verizon, if you've um, planned anything or um, plan to, to, to launch any efforts that are more focused on volunteering. Yeah, so, we have a, okay, go ahead, Liana. You go ahead. You go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Liana. so, yes, Liana, please. Okay, so uh, really quickly, so uh, Verizon, uh, Verizon Media, they, we actually have something which is like a foundation. So, for example, if there was um, something that we would raise money for, that if we contributed and we fundraised like ourselves or anything for a cause there'd also be a matching of it um so again mm. having that company kind of mandate behind it and green lighting something like that that can be really powerful in terms of the fundraising but also uh, for the cause so those are things that we have and we have a lot um going on at the same time and the great thing is is that as ergs we can go forward to the foundation and ask which ones or which causes because they keep changing especially when it's a crisis and if there's been an earthquake or things like that which has happened recently that we fund for then we can do that um in terms of other volunteering we actually have um obviously this has changed slightly because the lockdown a lot of volunteering efforts that we'd have would be in person but actually mm -hmm. as a company we have um, literally set aside time and encouraged to, to do volunteer hours. So that is something that um, the entire company, every single individual has hours that they can give towards and take time off and do that. Um, in terms of things to do right now, um, we've seen the volunteer efforts um, being um, as one to one another and within the ERG, but then within each uh, community around the world what is the thing that will help maybe local communities more so for instance um, mm -hmm. I know that um, some of my colleagues in Washington they're trying to support um, 
the local business, um, local Asian businesses, a lot, especially the food side, by trying to see if they can, um, you know, raise awareness for those businesses in order for them to help support them that way. So it can be small things like that that can actually make a big difference for your surrounding community, all the way up to um, fundraising efforts, which is approved by foundation. Yeah, and it's yeah. great that you're localizing your efforts because the needs across, um, you know, re re different regions are going to be different and that's going to be more relevant for the folks that are in that particular region or area. Stephanie, how about yourself? Yeah, a, a lot. We're also doing similar activities because we have a whole uh, program around community service and we get to log our hours and, and kind of earn community grants that we can um, send to, send to uh, programs. But I think what's unique for IBM being a technology company is that we have the unique capability to actually try to be part of the solution in terms of COVID-19. So we're kind of, kind of utilizing Watson Analytics, our, our artificial intelligence right now, to to try to focus on looking for solutions and permutations to see where the solutions are in terms of a cure for, for COVID-19. So that's that's the unique part about IBM. That's the great part about being a technology company. You get to work with a lot of coders and a lot of developers and a lot of people to try to be, uh, try to make the solution right away and, and as quickly as possible. I just wanted to great. add to what- Oh, go um, ahead, yes. I just want to add to it because that's a really good point and thank you for reminding me Stephanie um, yeah so the you know as a company I think it should never be underestimated like what a difference can be made right now on a big company basis in terms of what um, you can donate to communities so for example we're a technology and media company so very similar efforts that we're doing there but even something like um i see her recently they've uh, for verizon media guru he he has put forward that we donate for instance 10 million dollars worth of advertising space for mental health charities something like that can go a huge way in terms of a global impact in terms of a crisis like this so in a way like when we're in a situation right now things like that can have huge ripple effects for the greater good for you know a lot longer i love that and i love how you're thinking about giving back from a corporation standpoint as well i know captivate who owns a lot of digital out of home um billboards are actually providing it for free to small businesses so it's wonderful to think about it in the context of individuals uh, as the ERG group and also as an organization, how can we give back? Um, we have a lot of questions that are still on the docket, but unfortunately we're out of time. So I just want to wrap up with a few closing words and then thank our panelists. So Mike, if you don't mind jumping on to the last few slides, uh, we want to make sure that you're, you're staying engaged with us um, throughout uh, this time of COVID and working from home, we have a ton of events here at Ascend, probably more events now than we did before, and all of it is digital. So you'll have access to a, a whole slew of conversations, resources. Uh, we'd love for you to become a member if you're not already a member. The website to sign up for membership is there, www.ascendleadership.org. Uh, we'll make sure that we follow up with that, that URL if, um, if you didn't have a chance to, to jot it down today, but we'd love for you to join Ascend. We'd love for you to contribute to our foundation if you feel like uh, what we're doing is really bringing value to you and bringing value to the community. Um, and also, if you want to learn more about the impact series, um, if you actually want to provide some feedback and provide us with what you feel like we should cover moving forward, we'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, Rabina, who's been uh, steering this ship and, and really leading us and guiding us through this conversation, her email is on there. Uh, so we'd love for you to reach out to Rabina through that email that you see on the screen there. And then before closing out, we want to make sure that you are staying connected with us. Um, we are across pretty much every single social media platform. So there's tons of ways to stay engaged aside from signing up officially and also um, making sure that you're staying connected with us through the community and through the newsletters that we send out on a regular basis. And lastly, make sure that you are completing your survey as you exit Zoom. Um, we'd love to understand whether or not you found this conversation valuable. Um, maybe you have another lingering question that you really want to make sure that we get to, which we will hopefully find coverage for you for um, during our follow-up. But just want to provide a huge thank you to Rabina, to Mike, uh, to Will, but also um, hugely to Liana, uh, Stephanie, um, and 
and everybody who contributed to this conversation today. Thank you so much. Uh, hope you had an enjoyable um, webinar experience and we look forward to seeing you at the next Impact Series webinar. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Rubina. Of course. And Karen and Xiaodong, hello. <laughs> Thanks again. <laughs> Thank you, admit it. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. That was wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Maybe, maybe a picture, Sarah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Print screen. <laughs> one more time. I don't know. Okay, one more time. One more time. Picture. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got it. Got a print screen. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank right. you, everyone. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Stay safe.